Hello guys, welcome back to Grazy TV. With the BBC documentary highlighting Burning Sun scandal and blowing up again in the media, we recently found out that K-pop megastar Kuhara from Kara was directly involved in helping the case. She helped the case by getting her friend to confess and give the name of the police officer, the top police officer who was helping out the Burning Sun scandal members to cover up some illegal activities that they were doing. Shortly after Kuhara's passing in 2019, which also was around the time of the burning sun scandal somebody was known a thief had gone into her house to steal the safe that had her most important phone and documents inside so who was this thief and what were they after and were they related to the burning sun scandal or not and using ai technology in 2024 we're able to see the face of who this thief might have been you guys know on Grazy TV, I love to recommend you guys some free mobile games to play because sometimes I also need a break after telling and researching about true crime stories. And recently, I've been enjoying Cash Frenzy, who is a kind sponsor of today's video. You guys can scan the QR code anytime or link in the description box. Cash Frenzy is a thrilling experience just like if I was in the Vegas casinos. I used to go very often and I miss it. There's a huge selection of over 300 slots to play and high chances to hit jackpots. I like Jungle Queen the most because of graphics are amazing and if it's a summer vibe. I hit my first jackpot with Big Money Frenzy in just two spins. There's more free mini games to play like Shoot Rockets. And right now there's a limited event Freedom Cruise to celebrate Independence Day. So go collect the dices in any slots that you love. Join Freedom Cruise and claim up to $200 worth of rewards and pass. I often miss going to the casino because it's fun, it's vibrant, it's exciting. And with Cash Frenzy, you guys get that experience all on your mobile phone. Remember you guys to scan the QR code right here or the link in the description box. Sponsors really help out to continue Grazy TV and spreading these important information. So thank you so much to Cash Frenzy and it's free to download so you guys have nothing to lose. Thank you again to Cash Frenzy and let's get back to the video. So by now, a lot of you guys might know what the Burning Sun scandal was. And this is a web of scandal that started back in 2019. Now, technically, it started from a club. It used to be one of the hottest clubs called Burning Sun in Gangnam, Seoul, Korea. One of the club owners was Sun Lee from Big Bang. They used to be one of the, again, top K-pop groups ever. The scandal first happened when a man was beaten up by the staff members inside of the club. And when the police were called, nothing was done now he was the victim he's like wait i call the police i'm the victim i got beat up so why are these people not being charged and starting from there was the whole web of the burning sun scandal where it went to the drug cases where it went to the burning sun scandal members which is kind of like different but related to the burning sun club where there was a member of top korean singers celebrities ceos they had a very sexual scandalous group chat that went to, into a lot of illegal things and whenever these members got into to trouble with the law such as a s scandal adult scandal if you know what i mean they were never charged they were never prosecuted and how was that possible after knowing to be doing some crazy illegal activities come to find out these celebrities had a connection to a top police officer and they were paying him off to get these records out of their name and obviously that was an abuse of power so who was this policeman and that was in question because everybody was keeping it a secret Secret. Again, that is just like a one level surface of what was going on in the Burning Sun scandal because there was a lot of things going on. BBC documentary highlighted that Kuhara from Kara, now she was friends with Choi and Kuhara decided to contact a journalist. Now she wrote, she, she was a press journalist for a famous news company and she said, hey, I, it's Kuhara, like I want to help you guys and find out who the missing person is, the policeman. So she was able to talk to Tung, which they were apparently good friends back then and somehow she was able to convince Chung to give the name of this top policeman that was helping cover all of these scandals. They were able to get his name finally being able to prosecute this mystery man. Now during this whole time Kuara was dealing with her own scandals and issues. So if you could go back to 2019 you guys might remember that Kuara was in a S scandal, an adult tape scandal that she filmed with her ex-boyfriend and her ex-boyfriend was caught in CCTV 
physically assaulting her inside of an elevator, threatening her that he was going to release these intimate tapes of them. That was a whole scandal itself, so she was going through some tough mental time. Then around fall of 2019, Kuwara released a Japanese album where she was promoting as a solo artist. Now she came back to Korea during her break and on November 24th, 2019, for whatever personal reasons that she was going through, she was found un alive inside of her home and the cause was self. This was a whole shocker to Korea because Kuwara again was one of the most famous beautiful singers out there. I believe she was only like 28 years old when this happened and to like almost spit in the face of the family of the loved one that passed away, a thief came inside of Hara's home and decided to really violate their privacy and take something from her house. Which I think is like the ultimate like bad karma thing you could do to go inside the home of the one who passed away and steal something. Like dude, like how low are you? Jesus Christ. But this little scandal on its own goes even deeper into the rabbit hole. So in Korea, if you follow, I guess the Buddhism practice, there's something called the 49th day. So this is when once your loved one passed away every seventh day, seven times, so about for seven weeks, you do some kind of a ceremony, like a prayer to allow your loved one to cross the rainbow bridge. You know, it's like showing respect to the ones who passed away. So on January 11th, 2020 was that 49th last day of the ceremony. And two days later on January 13th, Claudia's brother now decided to pack all his belongings and go back to his own home. So now the house was going to be empty from here on. Now he says that he did arrange like her items and things that was in the safe as well. So he went inside of her safe, like took anything that was like really important and a couple phones out. He doesn't exactly remember like what he put in there because obviously I'm sure they were going through the grieving process and you know, there's a lot of stuff. Now, ironically, right after the day that he went back to his home on January 14th at midnight, a little past midnight, there was a thief that was caught on CCTV trying to get inside of her house. Now you see the thief here, he's trying to climb the walls between the neighbors and Clara's home. Next you see him in another angle trying to punch in the passcodes to get in. The passcode didn't work, he kind of gave up pretty fast and decided to climb up most likely to the second floor. Which is also an interesting thing professionals say that like why would a thief try to punch in the passcode? Because that itself is a kind of risky thing unless you know the passcode, right? Like if you don't know the passcode and you're just a random thief, like why would you punch random numbers? Unfortunately, these were the only two angles and two times when the CCTV caught this person. Because the way this CCTV worked was that there was a sensory, so only when there is a detection of motion, that is when the CCTV is recording. But if there is no motion, it's not recording to save camera battery and probably space. So it is interesting how when the thief was coming in, it was caught, but going out was not caught on tape. So the police believe that the thief got into the door of the patio on the second floor that he had to climb. This is a layout of how you could get into the house and especially to her dressing room. So you see the enter or the exit area from the patio and there's a specific way you need to know like pretty much the map of the house in order to straight get to the dressing room and leave because none of her other luxury items, such as the jewelry, she had a lot of luxury clothing and things like that. None of them seemed stolen, just the safe that was in the second floor dressing room. So it is definitely safe to say that this person knew the map of the house, how to get in and what to take because they decided to not take that Chanel bag or that Dior bracelet, like they only took a specific thing. So what was inside of the safe? Now family, again, brother Huin says that he did go in to the safe and decide to take the very important things. And he says that there was like documentations of like the house contracts and actually six of her old phones that she used to have. I believe in the interview, he mentioned that he doesn't exactly remember like what was left in there and what he took out, but he did take out everything important. But I believe three of the most recent phones that Hara used, he did take them and he took them to the computer shop or the phone shop because they were locked so that he can get access to it. But as you see, like the only person that would know this information of the phones being in there, important documentations, would be close family members. Like who would know like what would be in the safe, like what where the safe is inside of the house. That you have to be like a close 
family member or friend to be interested in this. So we all agreed that it had to be somebody that Kurata or at least the family knew. And the one person that this documentary highlights is a man named Pong. I'm not exactly sure what he does, but he was known to be friends with Kurata, Kurata's brother, and the Burning Sun Scandal member. So he was in this like circle of celebrities. And the documentary crew and went and questioned him and he said, of course it's not me. Which obviously it's gonna be so hard to tell if this person was actually related or not. And without evidence, it's wrong to accuse somebody, right? So if it was related to the Burning Sun Scandal, I'm sure the group of Burning Sun friends in that circle knew that, hey, Kuwata actually knows a lot of information. She's friends with Choi, she might be friends with the other members, and she started to maybe tattletale or give information, insider information to the press, and they were really scared. So after she passed away, they might have been like, we need to get her phone. Like, what's in there? If the family or the brother gets their hands inside of the phone and finds some shocking, incriminating information, that could look bad on us. So they might have hired somebody it could have been one of the friends who knows uh, went inside of her home to steal those phones so that information doesn't leak or could it be somebody totally unrelated to the burning sun scandal such as remember she was going through that ex-boyfriend scandal could it be that maybe um, it was related to that maybe her ex-boyfriend thought maybe there's even more incriminating things about him and he felt like he needed to get his hands on it since he was being charged with blackmail and maybe there was something even darker or, or crazier going on another theory could be that around the time that she passed away after she passed away actually her birth mother came forward claiming that hey i want the assets of my daughter kuwata now kuwata's brother and family came forward and said Oh, our mother's been never present in our lives. She literally left us when we were very young and never showed face. And now she comes back asking for assets after she passes away. No, that should definitely not happen. And the court actually later ruled that she does get the assets of Kulata's house and probably all the luxuries, like the 50% of it, even though she wasn't present in their lives. And recently, actually, the brother fought for this and said that parents who have not been present in the kid's life should not get the assets of their children after they pass away. And he won. He was able to pass a law that says that parents that are not present do not get their kids assets so back then in 2019 2020 after she passed away could it be the mother's side somewhere there you know maybe she hired somebody to say hey go and get like the important documentations maybe the phones maybe they were after like the house documents you know trying to get her house or something like that so in a way it could be multiple different parties that could have been related to this thief but at this moment the biggest theory is that somebody most likely wanted to get their hands on the phone because that would have a lot of valuable information rather they want to get rid of something or conceal something or find out something but who could this thief be and can we try to identify this person back in 2020 when this case happened it's kind of crazy but apparently the advanced ai system that we have now just four years ago didn't exist so the ai thing is going really really fast and crazy you guys because in this day and age we're able to find out way more information about what this person could have look like with camera enhancements but first of all to try and find out the possible age of the suspect they even did a test because climbing walls and trying to get a safe like a pretty hefty i don't even know how the safe could be probably like 20 pounds you know like over 20 pounds and trying to climb walls like who could do this and they got a professional a young man in his early 30s who's been a professional climber all his life like he was able to do this because he's like a professional climber right but somebody who is not like an athlete like he says that there could have been two people who probably had to do this or somebody very young and physique trying to get the safe climb down not you know be caught by the cctv i mean that is a lot of physical work and now using even a farther ai technology they were able to find that this, this thief actually had an earring on a shiny earring that was caught they were also able to tell that this man's glasses was most likely a nearsighted correction which is like crazy to point out because it's like they're able to tell this guy is far-sighted or nearsighted just on 
the way that the eyeballs were angled that came out of the camera. And finally, they were able to trim down to say that this man was probably in his 20s to mid 30s, so on the younger side with a slimmer physique. Mixing AI technology with a professional suspect montage sketch artist, they were able to come out with this sketch of what the suspect most likely looks like. Slim face with glasses, nearsighted glasses, likely to be in his 20s up to mid 30s. If you guys know anyone that looks like this or anyone that looked like this near Kuhara's circle, definitely contact the police. But again, it could be somebody that was hired, right? Somebody that knew the layout, somebody that was close to the family, Somebody that knew that the brother was packing up and going back to his house and just the next day happens to have a thief come set up her home. Ironic or not. So it's crazy to think that somebody near you, somebody in your family circle, near close friend circle could have done this, could have gave this information. Isn't that scary to think that like you have to have eyes on your back and question everybody surrounding you and what their motives are. This just taught me, um, especially the more famous you get, the more money you might have. There are so many people that are like parasites that are close to you, that are trying to, that only have the interests of their own. There's a lot to learn here from this case. The statute of limitation in Kuwata's case is only till 2030. So we're hoping that with this new information and with AI technology, becoming even better within the years we're able to catch whoever had done this and what their motives were. Let me know what you guys have thought about this case. Remember a thumbs up, checking out today's sponsor, Catch Frenzy. All of these really help to continue Gracie TV. Thank you for watching and see you guys in my next case.